I'm Dr. Brett DePoyster with the Aquarium Vet, and in this video, I'm gonna go over the most common problem associated with starting up a new aquarium, and that's ammonia toxicity. We've covered in previous lessons that ammonia is incredibly toxic to aquatic animals, and when we're seeing health impacts to our fish, we call this ammonia toxicity. Ammonia can build up to toxic levels very quickly, particularly in brand new aquariums that have just been set up and that biological filter is still cycling. Now, ammonia toxicity is not just a problem with new aquariums, it is something that we can see even in well-established aquariums. Anything that kills that beneficial bacteria in the filter can lead to increased levels of ammonia. And so, some examples of that in a mature aquarium can include overcleaning the filter, uh, using untreated chlorinated tap water to clean the filter, replacing or cleaning the gravel or substrate in the aquarium, or adding medications such as antibiotics will also kill off that beneficial bacteria. Another thing that can lead to increased ammonia in a mature aquarium is adding a whole lot of new fish, uh, overfeeding the tank, uh, or if any fish have died, that can result in excessive ammonia production. And if that amount of denitrifying bacteria in the filter hasn't increased, then that concentration of ammonia will also increase. Fish affected by acute or suddenly high levels of ammonia, they'll let us know when something's wrong. Uh, the fish could be observed gasping at the surface of the aquarium. They might be hyperactive because the ammonia is actually really irritating them. And they could even show neurological signs as the ammonia directly impacts the central nervous system. Other clinical signs that we could see is their eyes might become cloudy and white in appearance and the fish might produce excess amounts of mucus in response to that irritation that the ammonia is causing. And in severe cases, some of the fish might actually even unfortunately die. Even long-term or chronic exposure to low concentrations, that is concentrations that may not have caused those drastic signs that we just discussed in acute toxicity, but they can still result in enough damage to the fish most significantly, it affects the gills, causing inflammation to the secondary lamellae, which is known as branchiitis. And this long-term inflammation further results in thickening or hyperplasia of the gills and has a negative impact on the fish's ability to actually breathe um, and also for that fish to maintain its metabolic balance. So whenever we see anything wrong with our fish in our aquariums, regardless if it's a brand new aquarium that's still cycling or a tank that's been running for years, the first response should always be to collect a sample of water and test it. And if there's a high amount of ammonia readings, then there's two things which you should do straight away. The first is perform a 25 to 50% water change in the tank. We want to get that level of ammonia decrease. And after all, the solution to pollution is dilution. So we want to do that water change and get that concentration of ammonia down. Water changes should be performed with dechlorinated water and you need to be careful not to change the pH significantly. Um, because as we've discovered in the ammonia lesson, pH does have an impact on the amount of toxic ammonia that's present. And if the pH is increased during that water change, this will then result in more of that toxic or NH3 ammonia being present. The second response that we wanna do is temporarily stop feeding the fish as this will reduce the amount of ammonia that's produced by the fish. If they're not eating, they're not producing waste. So no food, no waste. Next, we need to check that the biological filtration is working. In new tanks, the most common problem is that there's just not enough denitrifying bacteria to process the amount of ammonia that's being produced in the tank. And if it's not possible to actually remove the fish while the filter cycles, the ammonia will need to be kept at low levels and we do this with regular daily water changes. The use of ammonia binding products are also available from your local pet shop and we also continue with that reduction in feeding until the bacteria in our biological filter uh, has matured. Beneficial bacteria can also be added to the aquarium and will help speed up that cycling process. Fortunately, nowadays, there are many products available at pet shops that contain these beneficial bacteria, and they are very useful to help speed up that cycling process. Another thing is the nitrification process requires a lot of oxygen in order to convert ammonia into nitrites. So it is critical that the water in the aquarium is well oxygenated. This can be accomplished with the use of adding an air stone and positioning the return of the filter water 
at the surface to help break up the surface allowing oxygen exchange. Now in freshwater tanks, another useful tool in an emergency is the use of zeolite. Um, zeolite is a natural product and it will bind ammonia and remove it from the water. We do need to be careful if you're adding salt to the water or if it's a marine aquarium, it's actually not that useful because the presence of salt will actually release the bound ammonia back into the water. Recall from the ammonia lesson that there are three very important water quality parameters that can have an effect on the amount of toxic ammonia or NH3 that is present. We've already touched on the pH and the other two are our temperature and salinity. We can use this to our advantage to help reduce the amount of toxic ammonia that is present and actually shift that chemical equation to the right with the less toxic ammonium being the predominant form. Now, the two parameters that are most easily modified are temperature and salinity. So, for example, lowering the temperature slightly and within the normal range for the species of fish that you have in the aquarium, uh, let's say you have a freshwater tropical tank, for example, that we keep at 25 degrees Celsius. We can reduce the temperature to 23 degrees Celsius and simultaneously increase the salinity from zero to five grams per liter. This will have a mild reduction in the severity of ammonia toxicity and hopefully help your fish recover while that biological filter matures. It is really important to remember that ammonia toxicity is something that can totally be prevented by properly cycling your tank when setting it up and routinely checking your water quality even in mature aquariums and hopefully any problems are detected before they actually impact the health of your fish.